Greetings YouTubers. Today we're going to talk about a 50 gallon Bradford White heat pump water heater uh, and how to repair if it's uh, tripping the circuit breaker. Uh, this is an Aerotherm model 50 gallon. This is only a two year old system. However, it started tripping the circuit breaker and turning off and I, I wasn't sure why but I figured out the problem. Uh, the problem was a faulty heating element and so I'm going to show you how to repair that quickly and efficiently the uh, installing company wanted to charge me six hundred dollars to to do this uh, fairly straightforward repair and even though this is a Bradford white model I imagine it applies to other other models and it should be just as easy so stay tuned and save some money before doing the repairs you need to drain the boiler that three easy steps Two, you need to turn off the cold water inlet valve from the top of the boiler and you leave the hot water line open, that's the return line. And number three, you need to open up a hot water faucet in the house that'll allow air into the system and it will allow this to properly drain, which will take uh, anywhere from one to three hours, so plan accordingly. There's a drain uh, plug down here. I've already attached a hose and you simply turn this knob to this position and you hear the water flowing. This panel can be easily uh, removed uh, by using a hex uh, screw driver. I've taken the bottom one already. Take out the top side here. Show you how this works. This uh, comes right off. Don't lose that screw. We'll set that down here. And then you have this insulation panel. That comes off. Uh, absolutely, before you do any of this, make sure and double sure that the power is off at the circuit breaker. And this also has a, a circuit switch dedicated, which is also in the off position. Um, and these water heater elements, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a metallic coil, which uh, electricity runs through this. This gets hot and heats the water. And uh, that's how that works. Uh, not too complicated. I have a voltmeter here to check for uh, continuity. And uh, there should be continuity between these two leads, the positive and the negative pole. That shows there's continuity because this rod is intact. Okay, you can also measure specific resistance in ohms. And uh, Using my continuity tester testing uh, this same heat element on uh, what's installed here, when I touch the positive and negative terminals, I should get a beep. This tells me something has uh, happened to this heating element, and I suspect this is the issue. Okay, uh, let's remove this. Very straightforward, two screws, you remove them. I've already loosened these. Pull these apart, take the positive terminal power, This exposes here your water heating element. Other tools you'll need for the job. I was able to get this water heater socket. It's a big one, but it fits perfectly around that. And I got a three quarter inch breaker bar and a three quarters to half inch adapter to fit here. Okay, so taking this off is a relatively straightforward process. Put the, the socket wrench and go counterclockwise. I've already loosened this from to prepare for the video. It really didn't take very much uh, torque. Uh, and let's uh, go ahead and proceed to unscrew this. Ooh. Let's take a look here. Oh, this is the issue. <laughs> this is clearly not normal. Grab this with. Okay, that's it. This is not normal. Uh, two years old, and this is rather disappointing for a new product. Bradford White, take note, improve quality. Uh, the new element that I have is slightly shorter than the old one. 
Uh, but that's okay, as long as the uh, electrical rating is the same. 240 volts and 4,500 watts. Let's take a look here. We have 240 volts and 4,500 watts. So. Okay, and replacing the element is just straightforward, not rocket scientists. I, I did take time to clean the threads here of any uh, residual uh, metal from the old element. Uh, just, gonna, just put this right in. Threads. You can always take your time. You don't want to certainly don't want to strip any of this. That's going in nicely. I'm gonna put it in hand tight and uh, just a little bit of tighter with the, my wrench, just so that it's snug. Okay, and this comes with its own screws. I'm gonna use the new screws and attach. Leads. And same here. Okay, I've got these in there. And these connections you do want very tight because there's a lot of current that goes through here and uh, you need a tight connection. Okay, so putting this back together, you take your, your service guard. This just goes in there. Like that. Don't forget your insulation. Goes in this way. And then finally, get the cover. Straight the cover. Easy peasy. On top, on the bottom. And since I have the boiler emptied and knowing the state of that element, I'm going to check the other elements and see if maybe we need to change those too. I have an extra one. So I removed this top plate. Uh, there is no heating element here, so I'll be putting that back in those two screws, but I did remove the, the lower cover, and indeed there is another, uh, the lower water heating element down here. I'm going to take it out and check it out. Uh, there was a lot of corrosion there. Take a look at the degree of this corrosion. I will note that in my neck of the woods, we have very hard water. I'm wondering if that might have something to do with this. Here are the uh, heating elements side by side. Look at the Degree of corrosion on this one. This element just kind of split right in half and partially crumbled inside. We're going to have to make sure we uh, thoroughly uh, rinse out and flush out uh, all this potential residue. Okay, back here. Um, I went ahead and I removed all this calcification from this lower heating element and then I used a wire brush to really give it a good scraping and it's mostly intact uh, it feels very strong uh, not uh, brittle in any particular point uh, I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall this uh, only because the little ladies of the house had, are dying for a shower they've been without one for a few days now uh, but we have here uh, 240 volts 4,000 watts part number 220. What is that? Uh, 52186 00. Yeah, and that, that is the lower heating element for this uh, Bradford White. Okay, so I've uh, replaced the upper heating element and cleaned out the lower heating mount. Ideally, I would have replaced it too, but I don't want to wait for the parts. Um, before I refill my water heater tank. Uh, I'm going to turn on the water inlet valve on and off several times and continue to drain because I think a lot of the sediment might be at the bottom of that tank and uh, probably not very good to have. So I'm going to be flushing out this water heater. Okay, and here we are 24 hours after replacing the upper heating element. The system is working uh, beautifully. We have hot water this morning. Everybody's happy. And uh, I, I'm leaving it in heat pump mode only, which is the most efficient uh, setting. And interestingly, uh, even though it was in that uh, mode, uh, it was still uh, tripping the circuit breaker. So it must have some sort of internal uh, control system that, that checks. Uh, and even though it wasn't, you shouldn't use, in theory, the heating element in heat pump mode only, it still was uh, tripping the circuit breaker. So. Uh, not intuitive, but a simple fix, and I hope I saved somebody some money. Take care.